It's an investment strategy that almost sounds too good to be true. You buy a house, you find some roommates, you take the best room in the house, and yet you have them pay your mortgage for you. It's called house hacking. We're going to talk about it today on State 48 Homeowner. Hi, I'm Kenny Klaus, and this is State 48 Homeowner. Hey, my friend, welcome back to the State 48 Homeowner Podcast. And today we're here with Dan Shellhammer, one of our top agents on the Klaus team. And we're talking about house hacking. There's two types of house hacking. There's the duplex and fourplex type, mm -hmm. right? And there's a single family type. Let's talk about the, uh, the first one, the duplex and fourplex type. Okay. How's that one work? Yeah, so basically... Um you would you can get a residential loan up to four units and the the powerful part about that is it allows you to put down as little as three and a half percent on an mm -hmm. fha loan so um by doing that your return on investment is that much larger because you don't have to bring as much money to the table so um whenever i get asked by like newer investors i always say it's a great starting point especially if you're single and you don't have kids um because you can basically live in one of the units and then rent out the other three. And you don't and have to have roommates. No. Because the other option that we're going to talk about, we're going to spend most of the time talking about, you have to have roommates. Yeah. So the the duplex, uh, fourplex, you've got to have, you, you don't have to have roommates. You get to have your own unit. Yeah. And Well, they're roommates per se. They're living next door, but yeah, not, <laughs> but not you, in your, not in your. Uh, but they're not unit. sharing food. Yeah, they're they're not they're not grabbing stuff from your pantry. Yeah. They don't have stuff in your fridge. Yeah, and you don't walk out and they're on your couch. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so you get one unit, mm -hmm. and you get to pick the best unit. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, you you let them rent the other units, mm -hmm. but you are gaining ownership of the entire, uh, the entire complex. Yeah. I mean, you're obviously collecting rent from them and they're, you know, they should be ideally between, let's say you do a four unit, those three other units are usually going to cover your mortgage. And then it allows you to basically live for free, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, super powerful from a liability standpoint, it allows you to put that money that you normally would have spent on your mortgage towards, you know, more investments or, Something else. Yep. So basically, it's the same concept as what we're going to talk about with the single family mm -hmm. model, which is yeah. what you did. Yeah. And so we'll look at that, but you can use the exact same model with the duplex and fourplex model. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's talk about what you did yeah. with the single family. Now, you learned about it because uh, somebody else was letting you pay their mortgage, right? Yeah, exactly. A good buddy of mine, uh, you know, right out of college, I went to live with him and um, you know, it was a really fair deal at the time I was paying like 650 bucks a month to him. And, uh, but it kind of turned a light bulb on in my head. Like, you know, why don't I go and do this when I'm ready to buy a house? And, um, so I lived with him for just under a year. And then at that point I had saved up enough money to, um, you know, go out and find my own house to do it. So let's, let's go back to what you said there. It's, it's, it's a good deal. Mm -hmm. So you're paying somebody else's mortgage in that that instance. Yeah. But you never really felt like somebody was taking advantage of you. No, no not at all. You're you're getting to live in a single family residence mm -hmm. for like 600 bucks a month. Yeah. Yeah, and I knew at the time like what I was getting was probably half of what I would have spent if I went out and tried to rent something comparable on my own. So, because it was me and a friend of mine and so we were all kind of sharing that cost. And so you saw what was happening mm -hmm. and uh, he had the owner suite, right? Yeah. <laughs> he had the nice shower. The master, yeah. <laughs> and then you had the secondary bedroom and you were sharing a, a bathroom with the other roommate. Yeah. And so that kind of opened your eyes to the possibility. And so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just super powerful when you think about it. I mean, you know, you're you're growing wealth every month. Somebody else is paying for it. You know, you're paying down your mortgage and uh, it just seemed like kind of a win-win for everybody. So 24 years old, you go out and get an FHA loan. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about that property that you got for your first. Yeah. Um, I ended up finding a townhouse. It was in the process of being built. So it's kind of crazy to say that my first house looking back was a new build. Um, 
isn't, and so I actually got some uh, lender incentives as well from that, but I ended up doing an FHA loan, allowed me to only put down three and a half percent, which I think yeah, it was around like seventy eight hundred dollars, eight grand, something like that. And um, it's and a, it's a nice investment. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I wish I could buy about twenty more of those. Yeah. What what that house cost at that time? But yeah, that was uh, twenty thirteen, and. Um, and yeah, so uh, the buddy of mine that was living with me when I was renting, he ended up coming with me. Um, my brother at the time was at the end of his lease, and so he decided to move in with me too. And so those were my first uh, two tenants, I guess you could say. So we looked at the math. The payment, mm-hmm. with including HOA, was yeah. about $1,700 a month, yep. and that included the PMI. Correct. So PMI for uh, when you have an... Uh, uh, when you have a FHA loan, you have a PMI, which is the, the personal mortgage insurance, actually MPI, mm-hmm. the FHA loan. And that is because you don't have that 20% down. Yep. And so the bank is going to say, well, you're a little bit higher risk. So we want you to have this mortgage insurance. And so you're going to have to have this extra payment. So yeah. uh, that's going to bring you up to $1,700 a month. So let's talk about what they were paying in rent. Um, yeah, so uh, my buddy Rick was paying, I believe it was six fifty a month, and then my brother he ended up getting it was a two car garage, and so he wanted the other spot to park his his car, and so he ended up paying basically like a fifty dollar difference for that. Okay. So he paid seven hundred, and then um, at the time, my, but the, but there were no birds pooping on his car. Yeah, no, and he didn't have to <laughs> uh, he didn't have to defrost it in the winter time yeah. and scrape all the ice off. So it was a it was a good deal for him. And um, and then about a year later, uh, my girlfriend at the time, who is now my wife, she ended up moving in. So there was a total of four of us. Um, she was paying the same rent, and um, and so yeah, it ended up working out really well. We got along really good and. Um, so with her in there, we're looking at two thousand dollars a month, mm-hmm. and a payment with HOA with MPI, seventeen hundred. So you're actually yeah. cash flow positive of three hundred dollars a month. Yeah, definitely. I would say like you know I ended up paying the utilities probably out of pocket. So, okay. but it was like a wash. I mean, yeah. it, it was a great house. And so you weren't, you didn't have a housing payment. So yeah. let's let's remember that. Yeah. Uh, so your cash flow positive and you're paying utilities. So that kind of, like you said, is a wash, but mm-hmm. you also don't have a housing payment. Yeah. And so everybody generally has a housing payment. And so one of the things that you were doing was taking what you would have been paying in a housing payment, putting that aside. Mm-hmm. And that's that's one of the things that we generally want to think of when we're doing a housing hack that you can either do or not do. And that's gonna make a big difference in whether you're going to do the housing hack just for the sake of making a huge difference in this property and just having somebody pay off this property and live rent free and let your roommates pay off this property or if we're gonna use this as a launching pad to build a real estate portfolio. Mm -hmm. And you said, well, I'm gonna build a real estate portfolio with this. Yeah. So you're taking that that housing payment and putting that aside. So let's talk about uh, what you did with that uh, that housing payment. Yeah. So you know, obviously it was two grand a month that I was saving, and um, I read Rich Dad Poor Dad, and through you know learning on bigger pockets, I you know just decided to kind of go all in on rental real estate, and so I just threw that. As, as well as some other uh, savings together. And I just started, you know, going after one single family house at a time. And first one was definitely scary. You know, you buy the house and I, once you get into the investments, you know, you can't do the FHA loan anymore. So I had to put 20% down. You yeah, know, FHA forward. loan is for owner occupants only. Yeah. And um, so got that first one and I was super nervous. I'm like, does this, is this going to actually work? Is somebody going to actually rent this out and pay my mortgage? And, uh, this was back in the 2016. So the, the purchase price and rental prices were way different. And so, um, ended up almost getting a, what's called a 2% rule where the the rental amount I got was almost 2% of the, the purchase price. So I was able to cash flow really well and 
um, in the eyes of the lender, you know, that it's just a lot easier to qualify for, for a rental property when you have, you know, returns like that. And this was in Chicago. Yeah, Chicago suburbs. Chicago su- suburbs, $70,000 yeah. house. Yeah. <laughs> and, we're, and we're seeing a, a 13, yeah. 1350 uh, rent. Yeah. Yeah. No, it uh, was three bed, uh, one bath. Yep. And uh, and that that was your first first property that you weren't living in. Correct. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about how that feels. Yeah. Because I, I remember mine. Mm-hmm. Felt really good. Yeah. Tell me about the first time that you drove by it when it had a tenant in it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I tried not to snoop on them too much, but, uh, (laughs) you know, it was about 20 minutes from where I live. So, you know, especially with the early ones, it was kind of like a baby to you. And so, you know, you would go by and, you know, check on it and see how it's going. And luckily, uh, that house always had really good tenants. Um, It was close to a lake and it was it was a good part of town. And so, um, you know, it ended up being a really good really good investment for me. Um, and did you manage it yourself or did you? I did. Yeah. I had a really good handyman. I went through, I went through about three different handyman until I found a really one, you know, trustworthy, reputable one that I could, you know, uh, rely on to do the work and at a good price. And, uh, so he helped, you know, kind of manage all that stuff for me. And then, I would put the the combo locks on all the doors and stuff. So anytime a tenant moved out, I could just quickly change the locks, okay. things like that, that I kind of learned as I, I went along. But yeah, I remember the first house, I was out there mowing the grass when I first got <laughs> it and washing the windows and, you know, cleaning the gutters. And as time went along, you, you know, you kind of get a little more hands off as you kind of learn different systems. But let's talk about the second one. Yeah. Yeah, so the second one, um, I think it was just a few months after the first one, after I got the first one kind of up and rolling, um, found a great little one bed, one bath house for 50 grand. um, And it ended up running for about 1100 bucks a month. So it was, it was a great property, um, turnkey, you know, I didn't really have to do much work to it. And uh, never had an issue renting that. And it was kind of funny, because I had, I believe, four different tenants through the time that I owned it. And every single tenant was like a boyfriend, girlfriend. And we used to always joke about it because each one of them got pregnant for the first time <laughs> in that house. And we always joke because the house was like not even 500 square feet. So they didn't have much room it was a fruitful to escape. Home. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, during that time that you lived in that house hack house, mm-hmm. Uh, you built in, built that up into eight doors. Yeah. And one of them was a duplex. Yeah. One of them was a duplex. So seven different properties, eight, yeah. eight, eight doors. Yeah. And then, uh, then you moved to Arizona mm-hmm. and, uh, you kept that, uh, original home for another couple of years. Yeah. When we first moved out here, I still had all of the rental properties at that point. And then we ended up running out the, the original house hack, which ended up being just an awesome deal. And, um, wanted to take advantage of some, you know, for tax reasons. Mm-hmm. If you live in a house for two out of the last five years, when you go to sell it, it's different than an investment property. It's not, you know, you know, you don't pay tax on the gain. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've rented that out for a couple of years after we moved out here. And at that point kind of shifted my, uh, goals towards, you know, vacation rental properties, specifically like Airbnb. And so let's go back to that capital gains ex- exclusion there. Mm-hmm. It's an investment property that you're living in uh, yeah. because that ha- that's one of the things with the house hack is you are living in an investment property. And that, mm-hmm. that is something that makes it a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, having your roommates pay your rent, uh, it is an investment property, but yeah, you're, you're enjoying uh, living in it, uh, which makes it a little bit different. Yeah. The Klaus team is different. With the Klaus team, you have someone on your side. Where you live and make memories is important. We have more unique strategies than anyone else to help you accomplish what matters most to you. We can help you with traditional real estate as well as other options such as our lease purchase programs. We can help you buy first then sell and we can bring you instant offers. We're here to help our neighbors achieve the American dream and help them build wealth through home ownership. For more info or to start your home search, visit us online at klausteam.com. So now you have 
a portfolio of short-term rentals mm -hmm. uh, is your flavor, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so you went, you moved from the buy and hold strategy to the short-term rental. What, yeah. what changed your, your mind? Um, I think I just, I, I've just always kind of loved like the hospitality industry and just, you know, providing people with a, you know, great time and things like that and happened to live in one of the hottest markets to do it in the country. And so, um, when I really just started digging into the numbers of the Airbnb, it was so at the time it was so dramatically higher than a long-term rental in terms of cash flow. And so, um, that's kind of where I was looking was to just, Hey, let's see how many of these I can get and what kind of cash flow I can generate. Um, and so, and there's also, you know, from a tax standpoint, there's even more uh, tax benefits and things like that with the short term that come along. So a lot of different write-offs and things like that, that you can carry over into your uh, earned income. So, and, and as you were buying these, you were doing conventional loans and you were doing mm -hmm. them income based. Yeah. And so there's other ways to, to do that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do them, uh, uh, DSCR, a debt service coverage ratio, yeah. uh, that if you don't have the ability to do them income based, that you can do them on a business model. Yeah. Uh, and so there's, there's multiple possibilities that people can do on expanding their real estate portfolio. And, you know, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we, we uh, were talking about how people could uh, even use their uh, retirement plan. Mm -hmm. to uh, start uh, building a real estate portfolio and using their self-directed IRA. So there's a, a lot of different solutions yeah. people can use. Now, there is an exclusion there that if you wanted to house hack, you can't use your self-directed IRA because there's an arm's, arm's length mm -hmm. uh, exclusion there that you can't, uh, you can't live in it, your family members can't live in it uh, that, uh, for that self-directed IRA. But uh, uh, for this house hacking, you know, uh, that was a great solution for you. Yeah. I mean, now looking back on it, it's honestly one of the greatest financial decisions that I ever made for myself, especially at a young age to really take advantage of, you know, putting that money into more investments and getting rid of the biggest liability that most people have, which is their mortgage or their rent. I really appreciate you being on. And if you are interested in uh, starting as an investor or growing as an investor, you know, one of the things that sets the Klaus team apart is we've got experts in a lot of different fields. And as you can see, um, our agents are experts, not just in dealing with clients who know how to invest, but we've got agents that are active investors themselves. So if you'd like to reach out and start the journey, uh, just connect with us at klausteam.com slash call us first. Thanks for spending time with us this week at State 48 Homeowner, the ins and outs of owning an Arizona home. You can connect with us for more information, submit topics you'd like us to further discuss. You can see relevant videos, give us feedback, answer your real estate questions and more at state48homeowner.com.